All right, everyone. So we've got several things we want to accomplish today on the on the last day of class. So at this point, you should be logged into your dashboard. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is is cosmetic, but very important. Uh, if you visit site to look at your your home page, that's a very weak home page. Remember, we haven't really addressed that in a while. Uh, there's our home page, and it says "Welcome to our shop," and that's our home page. That's uh, judging a book by its cover, judging a website by its home page. Yes, so we should uh, make our homepage look a little bit more interesting simply than that. This will remind us about how did we set up the homepage because by default, WordPress shows you a list of all your blog posts on the homepage and we changed it. That was probably a long time ago, so let's remind ourselves how that was done and then we'll fix this homepage. We'll go back to the dashboard and to change the default behavior so that it doesn't show the blog, that it shows a page that we designate, that is over here under Settings, Reading. So let's go to Settings in your dashboard and then Reading. And right there at the top, it's, it's where you set that. The default is Front Page will display your latest blog post. That was the default. We change it to instead a static page because a blog is not a static page. If you're adding to it, it's going to be changing every time you add a new blog post. A static page is one page that always stays the same. And so then we told it uh, for your home, for your front page, use a page that we created called Home. There's no Home page on a default WordPress installation. We went in to add new page and we called it home. And then we set this screen on the front page, use that home page. And then we created another page called blog, and that was just a placeholder. Because then here we tell it, put all of the blog posts onto that blog page. Again, we went to uh, pages, add new, and we created a blog page. And we could call these things anything we want. We could have called home, you know, start add new page and call it start and set it here as start and it would work no problem we could have um, made a page called writings and said put the posts into the page called writings and that would work now that we've worked a little bit more with it notice if you select here we've got the other possible pages we're not going to change anything here we already did it weeks ago but this is the place where you set that it's easy to forget that because there's just so many screens and settings for WordPress aren't there and this is the one very important one, but they kind of have it buried in there under the settings in reading. So once that reminds us that the home page displays content on, on the home file, on the home page file, we can edit it. Let's go up to pages, all pages, Here it is, home. We did it back on, oh, look at that, uh, September 19th. And then blog. So the all of the blogs are going to be put there. Uh, you don't have to click on it, but if you view the blog, I'll show it to you here, it's empty. It just says, welcome to the blog, but it doesn't display that. It just uses this as a placeholder to put all your blogs. So whatever content we put here will be erased. It's a moot point to actually write anything here, it does it for us. What is not moot is this home page that we created here. So let's go to your pages and select Edit Home. That's the home page. Welcome to our shop. And that's what displays on the home page there. So we should take care to really take the time to set up the SEO for the home page. This is the one that the search engines will want to deal with first. And this is the page, this is your most front-facing page. This is, this is the front door to your house. You want it to look good. So we'll fill in some content up here in a moment. But this is internal stuff. 
that the search engines care about and ultimately the user cares about because users, regular people, use search engines. So if someone was trying to find my company um, and they typed in bakery, my page would probably not show up because there's already thousands if not hundreds of thousands of bakeries. Maybe there's only, let's say, uh, 500 bakeries in San Diego. That gives me a better chance of being found in San Diego, right? But maybe I'm also targeting um, <coughs> East Lake, and I'm a bakery in East Lake. So you have to think, what would set you apart from everyone else, from every other realtor, every other baker, every other web designer, every other dog walker, every other of your niche company? So that's what we want to fill out here. The default is Google and Bing and Yahoo are going to see your site as home, Victor's Bakery. I instead wanted to say um, family owned bakery in East Lake, Victor's Bakery. I have the name of my company. My company's name has the keyword of bakery. But then I have this whole sentence here that tries to sell people on click me, click my link. Because what shows up here is a preview of what your search result will look like in Bing and Yahoo and, and Google. So if there's just something that says Victor's Bakery, there's no enticement there. I don't know who Victor is. <laughs> Uh, so I don't want to click on it. But if it says family-owned bakery in Eastlake, okay, I live in Eastlake, that might be good to click on because they're local. Family-owned, I like that. They, you know, they're not just some trendy startup. Uh, family-owned. What's that? Chain. Bakery. They're not a chain. They're family-owned. So this is going to be up to you on your own sites. And this is the art and the science of search engine optimization, which is a class I teach, a complete I think it's four weeks long, three weeks long, something. I'll talk about it later. But in that class, I go into detail about writing effective text, also known as copy. Writing effective copy uh, to optimize your site screen by screen so that you get more of a chance of being found on the search engines. So we'll write this for my company, but for writing it for your company, that requires the art and the science of SEO. Basically, you, how do you stand out? What, what are, how are you different from your competitors? What makes you unique? So family-owned bakery in Eastlake, Victor's Bakery. And then I have a little section here that I do not want to omit. I want to fill this out because at the moment that says, Welcome to our shop. The search engines, if you don't tell them anything here specifically, they will go to your homepage and try to find the first text it stumbles upon. And a lot of times, it, if you don't set this up, it might grab the text of your menu bar. And your menu bar probably says about, contact, shop, instead of a more well-crafted message here, a well-crafted and enticing message for the user. So something like, founded in 1985, Victor's Bakery serves the best and then you do the research of your SEO to see what people might be searching for and I'm gonna say I'm gonna focus on the people that are really interested in the best um, organic fair trade gluten free non GMO buzzword 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 baked goods GMO. Genetically modified oh. organisms. Do you own a bakery? No, but I like them. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> Baked goods that satisfy your craving. Again, the art and the science. This is a form of advertising, which is part of the larger field of marketing. Anyone ever watched? Let me say, anyone ever heard of Mad Men, the TV show? Anyone watches the show? 
or watched the show Mad Men. If you never watched it, it's basically uh, a dramatic look at Madison Avenue uh, marketing executives, advertisers in the 60s. And it's an interesting show. I gave it one season and then I kind of like, ah, it's not for me. Uh, but it went on to like five more seasons or so, won many Academy Awards. But the, the point of it is, which I did find interesting, is what how does advertising and marketing affect us? Because in short, if you want to distill it, um, one theory is that what, our, what marketing and advertising is, is a method to convince you of something. So think of all of the ads that you're inundated with, especially now during election time. Literally, they're trying to convince you that that candidate is the devil and this one is an angel. So they're engaging in marketing, in advertising. Okay. Uh, what are the advertisements related to fast food trying to tell you? They're trying to tell you that this hamburger here is going to be very juicy and fulfilling and it'll make you a great person. And when you actually buy it, you know, it's all squashed and the meat is not so <laughs> nice looking. So they're trying to convince you of something. Here, we're going to try to convince people, click on my link. When you get a, when someone searches bakeries in Eastlake, perhaps, and you get your other 10 competitors, and you're one of them, how do you convince someone to click on yours? Well, you have to do the research about perhaps who your target audience is and what you want to portray to people that could possibly click on your link. And notice here I'm putting all of these keywords because yes, my bakery is all about this stuff, organic and fair trade and all of that. And then notice then I also put in a little bit of um, what's the term for that? Editorializing or enticement. Baked goods that satisfy your craving. Cravings. Founded in 1985, Victor's Bakery serves the best organic, fair trade, gluten-free, non-GMO baked goods that satisfy your cravings. You could also use this spot right here because again this is going to be your best foot forward. You can use this spot right here to um, have some sort of CTA, call to action, another marketing term. What is some sentence or some phrase that a person can do an action? Call to action. For example, I'm going to run out of space in a moment here. Stop by on Saturday. Exactly. Notice right here. I'm running out of space. I have 156 characters. I have 26 left. I want to use as many as possible. I'm about to run out of space. But I could say something like, um, stop by Saturdays. Saturdays for a free crawler. That's a call to action. Do something. That's a more tangible thing. Um, advertising, marketing, they're trying to compel you to something, convince you of something. And then here we have an aspect of that, well, you will be able to achieve that perhaps if you do this. So I'm going to remove this, but this is an example. And again, on my SEO class, I go into this in detail. And I've gone over the limit, and notice the result is that it gets cut off on the search engine results. It's recommended that you stay within the limits, like that, and that you condense your message down to the 156 characters that we are constrained to. So I've um, optimized that a bit. There's still more nuances, but you can research this on your own, the WordPress SEO plugin, and of course take the class. We'll talk about it more in detail, but you'll see this is what you'll want to do to all of your pages. Yes, it's work, uh, especially if you've got 20 pages. But once you do it, it really helps you in the long run because it'll... Uh, get you higher up on the search results, possibly, and even better, people might click on your link. So yes, you, which is, I saw a hand before you. Do you yes. mean focus keyword blank them, or is that, what is that exactly? Is it just one word? Or? Again, this there's a lot of details that we could still be talking about. 
uh, and that'll be more for the uh, SEO class. You can go in and notice if you put your hand over this, it tells you uh, what that is and read that article there and it'll give you more detail. But for us, at least this is all that we need because without it, we had a very ugly listing on the search results. It just said home and it had no description. I think it just said welcome to the shop. This is a much better crafted one. Yes. You said to do this on each page? Yes. Yeah. Ideally. ideally do it on every page. After we install the WordPress SEO plugin by Yoast, now we have this screen for all of our pages. And we should take the time at some point to do it. At the moment, our home page also says, Welcome to our shop, which is not that interesting. Uh, a home page, we should take it, uh, we should take advantage of it to uh, really put something uh, a little more meaningful, whereas here we have only enough space for a sound bite. Well, this is the part where we can give the full, the full interview. So, no, there's no limit on this one. Exactly. So here, uh, again, this is best for the SEO class, and this is, again, in Art and a Science. What do you want to say on the home page? We'll just fill in a little bit here. Maybe put, put in... Um, we have, I think we have a whole About Us page. So that page is the one that goes in detail about the company. But what can we say in maybe a couple of sentences about us on the first paragraph? And then the second paragraph... Maybe, again, what makes us unique. So I'll do the first paragraph is a, is a quick about us. Second paragraph uh, will be what makes us unique. So we'll say, um, you, can, you can use all or part of what was already in this meta description. But I'm going to rewrite it, actually. I'm just going to put it down there so I can read it, but I'm not going, don't worry about doing that. I just want to have it up here. Uh, so I'm going to say, um, this time I'll say, Victor's Bakery was founded in, oh, we'll do it like this, Our Bakery, Victor's Bakery, was founded in 1985. Humble Kitchen in East Lake, California. Since then, we've strived to strive to strive striven. We've striven to. Serve the best baked goods around. In the second paragraph, then I'll say uh, our ingredients are always organic. Fair trade, gluten free, and non GMO. So you know you'll get the good stuff. Stop by. Now you can say, what's the point of the website? This is this is about the company, and now we can say a little bit about, well, what's the point of the website? Our website is you will be able to buy the products here as well. You can walk into the shop and buy the products, the baked goods, but here you can also buy them and get them shipped. So we could say something like, if you're not in our neck of the woods, visit our online shop and order a few goodies. So 
So as I'm writing this at the bottom, WordPress has told me I've got 45 words here. And again, there's no limit here. You can write as much as you want. But uh, you don't want to inundate people right on the home page with a lot of text. You kind of want to explain what the site is about, why, why you would be here, what can you do here, and then let them go off to the different pages that they would care about. Maybe more detail in the About page. Maybe they want to hire you for catering. Go to the Catering page. Maybe they want to buy your product. Go to the big, uh, to the Shop page. So I think this is good here. And obviously, if you wanted to, you could go in and, like, uh, for example, do a little formatting of your text on Victor's Bakery. Here, you can make that italics. You have a few other little bit of styling that you can do at the top right of the edit bar. This is the edit bar up here. Uh, at the top right, the, the second to last icon is the, I, is the one to give you more editing abilities, uh, such as text color and such. So I think it's useful to turn that on, toggle toolbar. And then here, for example, I can make my text color there. And I've got a few other things I could do. There's my undo also. All right, that's fine for the home page. Of course, we could add pictures and such, but our home page is already little busy because we've got uh, this picture on the top left just to see how widgets work. We've got this picture over here as well as a video. So if we add another picture, it'll be here getting a bit cluttered. So we want to uh, update this page on the top right. Just a moment. And then when we look at the home page, now we've got a little bit more content. Question. You need to select first the text that you're going to change, and then you've got an icon right here. Look up here. You've got an icon right there. Yeah. So if we look at our home page now, Go back to visit site, and there's our home page. You open with a new tab. Mm -hmm. You can right click the uh, link uh, where it says visit site, and then you want to right click, and you have. Open with a new tab. Mm -hmm. So you can toggle back and forth. Mm -hmm. This is my home screen. Looks good. One little thing that I don't quite like. Uh, we have this wasted space here. It says home, and perhaps we can use that again for a little bit more of the marketing of the SEO, of, of uh, getting the message out. Home, well, it's obvious. We don't really write home on a home page anymore. Obviously, it's the home page. You know, after uh, 25 years of, of the web, I, we think we know that the home page is the first page we, we go to. So that's editable up here. If you go back to edit the home page, the text that would appear at the top is right there. Now notice that the, the text when we, when we go to visit site, home is all caps. That's because of the, of the template. So if you ask, well, how do we take that off? Most likely we'll have to go into the code somewhere and change that. In our case, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not worth it to, to do that just yet. So I'll go back to edit the page again, and then instead of home there, what would make more sense? Welcome. Welcome? Awesome. Well, just uh, one, one at a time. So uh, what do you guys think? Welcome is good, or... or um, That's a big room in the world. Well, we're only targeting East Lake. The world's a big place. <laughs> Let's see how it looks with welcome. Maybe that's all we really need. And when we go back here, whatever text we put shows up there. And remember, we have a limited space, so 
if if you write too much, it might take up too much. So I'm fine with that. But anyway, what was your question? Somehow, I got two tabs with the uh, bakery, no tabs dashboard. When I got back to the dashboard, but I'm not on the home page. What's the fastest way to get back to the home page? Do I have to go back into pages? That's right. You have to go back to pages, and then they're all listed there. All and pages. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I do that. This, of course, depends on your theme. Uh, I think my theme, the central area to write something more like a catchphrase or a tagline, I would prefer to do that, but it might not quite fit. So, for example, if I do have a tagline uh, like, you know, baked goods, good baked goods for you or something, you know, some sort of tagline, I could put it there. That would be the first thing you'd see. But this is fine at this point. Yes. This only shows up when you're logged in. It knows that we're logged in because at the top right it, sa it says your name. So I'm logged in to edit my site. And this gives me then the ability to quickly jump in. I guess this is another way to answer your question. If you're here and you see your edit, click on it and it takes you right to edit the page. If I'm over on the, if I, if I browse over to our history page, I'll see edit there too. And I can go in and edit that. So only us that are logged in will have that edit button. If you're logged, if you're not logged in, if the regular users are coming in, they're not going to see that. Okay, so we worked on our homepage a little bit more. Here's another big thing we should work on. It's cosmetic, but also very useful. Notice uh, our menu at the top over here. I want to actually customize that. Mine says blog, contact history, products page, sample page, and welcome. We don't want to show the sample page. We could delete it, of course, but uh, I don't want to show the sample page up on the menu. Number one, the order of these things is not quite right. I think a lot of people nowadays expect that on your menu you also have a, a link to home because you might be under the history page, how do I get back home? Up here it's called welcome and we know it's welcome, the home page, but a lot of people might not. So we should add a button or change that so that it says home. Now most themes do have the ability to click on their logo the name of their site and then it goes back home but in my experience I have found depending on the savviness of a, of a person using the web they might not know that uh, but usually you're able to click on the the logo of your website and it goes back home to make it more obvious we'll also put it up on the menu and also what really bothers me is that I'm not selling products I'm selling you know joy I'm selling baked goods. So products is way too uh, sterile, so we need to edit that. Can we also edit out just to use the WordPress site? Yeah. So let's edit our, uh, our menu. Go back to the dashboard. And we'll go <clears throat> over to the appearance menu and then select menus. I think we touched on this briefly previously but of course it bears repeating because it's pretty important. Let's go over to appearance and then menus. Yeah, I thought so. So here on the right side what we've got we created a main menu at some point and we populated it with these pages. Although we're not using the menu. How can I tell that? At the bottom here, it says, use this menu on this theme's location, and none of them are selected. So we created a custom menu at some point, and what happens usually when you switch from theme to theme, your custom menu is deactivated because it doesn't know where to put it. Some theme might have a top primary menu, and some might just say, you know, menu. 
This has got a top one, a secondary one. I've seen themes that also have like a, a footer menu. So when you switch from theme, theme to theme, usually your menu is deactivated and it goes back to the generic behavior, which is put every page up on the menu in alphabetical order. So what we want is to uh, here select top primary menu. Save menu. And if you go back to view visit site, there we go. Now our menu shows home, history, blog, contact. And it's missing all of my products. So let's address that. But looking forward, because I've done this before, we want to do something else first. We'll come back to edit our menu a bit. But think about this. Uh, previously, if we were to go to the products page, all five or seven or whatever of our products show up in one long screen. I instead want to have a screen just for cakes, and a screen just for pies, and a screen just for whatever. So that means I need to create pages. A page for every one of those types of products I'm trying to sell. Every one of those categories of products. So we need to set that up first. We need to create some pages that will display those products, and then put them up on the menu. So let's go back to, if you're not there, go back to your dashboard, and we will go over here. Here's some shortcuts. Uh, we're going to create a new page, sure. So if you hover over pages, we've got Add New. But also, here's the shortcut. At the top, you always have this menu bar, even when you're visiting your site here, and you've got a section of New. Here's where you can quickly create posts, pages, products, users. So even if I'm on visit site here and I go up here, new page, it's always there. So make a note that that's a little time saver. Uh, so I'm going to go here, new page. Let's create a new page. And on this page, we will only focus on pies. Let's give that a name up there, pies. And I want to display only our pies. Uh, click inside of the editor here, and then Look at this icon on the top right, little pair of credit cards. That is not there until you install the WP e-commerce plugin, our whole e-commerce plugin. So when you have when you don't have that plugin, you don't have this button. We do have the plugin. Now let's use this button. What this does is it allows you to display on a screen particular content from your uh, from your shop. Uh, so let's try it. Top right, add a product shortcode. Remember, shortcodes are little bits of code that let you do a lot. Because in the old days, we would have to create a page and write our code to display this product. Pretty complicated. But nowadays, a lot of themes or plugins have shortcodes where you just click a button, and in the background, it's writing the code for you. But in the foreground, we just select something very easily. So what I'm trying to say here is this will allow us on this screen to only display a certain category. Select category, pies. This page will only show products in our inventory that are tagged as pies.
we've got a couple of options here. Number of products per page. Many of these are pretty straightforward. I'll explain them anyway. Number of products per page. If I've got 40 pies, I don't want a, a huge list of 40 pies. I want five at a time and a way to go next and previous and so forth, which is built in. But here I could say only show me, you know, five pies at a time if I've got 50 of them. I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to put anything there. I want all the pies. I don't have that many. Then um, we have a way to only show products that are on sale. Remember, when we create products, we have a base price, and we can do a sale price. So if we wanted to, on this page, we could say, show me pies that are on sale by turning on add sale products by category. This will add all your products you have on sale from the selected category. So if I've only got, however, three pies on sale out of 40, it'll only show those three. How do you tell it under sale products? It says add all sale products or add sale products by category. Hmm. Are you saying you, you select add sale products by category and then it's going to ask you what's the category? Or? Nope, it asked you up here. Select category. But if you only are going to put three pies on sale, I don't understand how you differentiate the non-sale pies from the sale pies. You have to do that when you're editing your product. We have pecan pie, lemon meringue pie, and whatever pie. So when you're actually editing pecan pie, there's a spot in there that says on sale for two dollars instead of six. So you That's do that you put the on the dollars in instead of the right price next week. Yeah, yeah, related to that in that I think that was however for multiple, you know, multiple yeah, orders. Quantities. But there was one in there about regular price of your product and right next to it is a sale price. If you put sale price then this will take into effect. So it's chicken or the egg thing. You need to set your products up as sale products first and then here tell it show me those sale products. There's no way here at this point to set your sale products. The converse is add all sale products, which I don't think is as useful because everything that's on sale will show up here, which will override the point of selecting a, a pie. It'll also show you your cookies on sale. But you could have a page of, you know, these things are on sale. So I could say no category and then show me all sale products. That would work. I would need a different page though. It would be like, you know, fireside sale today or what do they call that? Fire or something? Fireside Fire sale? sale? Fire sale. Um, so that's another way to do it. So you've got some leeway. In our case, let's just say we're going to show pies. No limit, so I didn't write anything here. And don't specify products, either of these. We have also the ability, we don't have to go here, but I'll show you under products, we can show particular products. But this is very unwieldy, I think, because once we started to add 50 products, there will be a long list of all of your products here. So if you, only want, if you want to create a page only for your birthday cake, you could, although it does it for you. So again, I'm not exactly sure what this would be useful for. I haven't had to use it. Add an Add to Cart button, of course. I want to buy it and add a product. This will add the selected product to your page. Yeah, I don't know. This page to me, this option to me seems very redundant. To figure out what it's useful for later. But this one, definitely category pies. And then the as again, the plugin is very nice, very robust, as is out of the box for free. But if you want more functionality, you've got the premium upgrades, like a product slider and member capabilities. If you want people to be able to buy a membership in order to see this content, you can upgrade it. Would you say that this is equally good as buying a membership program or plug in like a wish list or something like that? Hard to say. I sort of feel that probably wish list would be better because it specializes in that. Mm -hmm. This is an add-on to a different concept. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I want to create my own slider with jQuery, you can do that. What what would I put the code in the 
the name of this page and then most likely you would go to this page and then you would go to the text view and remember that gives us the ability to edit the code of this page so then you would add your jQuery slideshow there okay. yes most likely I haven't used it so can you tell us a little bit about I think it? it's a plugin so, I, haven't, I haven't used it yet so wish list we can look it up and it's most likely a plugin. It's on memberships. Hmm. And that's what it's called. So most likely it's a plugin. That's usually what we what we get. It's some little add-on app to WordPress. Uh, so a plugin and uh, gives you membership abilities. And there's probably a dozen more or two that do the same thing. And I would look at the star ratings and people's comments and number of downloads to decide which one to invest in. So finally, at this point, let's insert. Notice what it does for us. It writes this short code. And it's short. It's telling us product category number 15, display it on the screen. This is, of course, editable because I could say show us product 14. I don't know what 14 is. I'd have to look at another screen that tells me what those numbers are. And I don't need to. I just press the button up here and say, show me the cakes. And it'll tell me it's product ID 22. For the moment, this is all I want to do. I want to give the page a name and what particular product. So publish it. We'll do, the, we'll do this a couple more times. You try it a couple more times. Add now a new page for cakes and one for cookies. And see if you can get that to work. And then together we'll make the, the menu. If we have to make the pages, then we can add them to the menu. Yes. Is this way we add the recipe one? Or that's a separate We should do that one too, yes. So we're going to need to do cakes, cookies, pies, and the PDF recipes. So that's not a separate area where you download and tell us that? We could, but that might be too complicated for what we're trying to do. So I'm just going to include it in the same, you know, the, the shop. It's going to be shop and then drop down menu, which will say cookies, cakes, pies. PDF recipes. So we're not we're not limiting products per page like before. No, we don't have enough products that that will really be that useful. So we just go to insert. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see them yet. We don't have them. We don't have them on the menu yet. So let me give you a, a one more minute. Make sure you've got these pages up here: uh, cakes, cookies, PDFs, and PDF recipes and pies.
I would think that that map data is being pulled from some official map source. So I'm surprised that it's not up to it. Yeah, it's kind of strange. But it's showing all its locations. <laughs> all right, so let's make sure that we've got those four pages. Uh, once you've created those pages, we'll go back to um, the menu because now these pages have not added themselves automatically to my menu up here. The default behavior was that all new pages add themselves to the menu unless we create our own custom menu, which is what we did. We made our own menu and we organize it. Remember, we put blog here and home there. And so now it will only put content up there that we specify. So now we need to specify. We've got these pages. So back on our dashboard here, let's go to Appearance, Menus. On the left side, it'll show you these are your pages, the most recent or view all. And on the right side it shows you the, the menu in order. It's from top to bottom here, but that's how it's going to display from left to right. And so what I want is um, maybe I do want for people to... this is what you have to decide, and I guess I'll show you the way that I would recommend. Uh, maybe you do want a page that it does show everything, and you go page next, page next, page next in addition to each category. Or maybe you just want each category and not a full page of everything. We can do both, but let's do first the way that my vision is. I'm going to have an item up here that says, you know, shop. And when you hover over, it'll drop down and it'll say cakes pies, etc. So then a person can click on those. They're not going to click on the word shop. That's just there in order for them to hover over to see each subcategory. You could set it up that in addition to what I've just said, you could click on shop and it will then show you everything. We'll see. So you would, you would do that by creating a page that says shop? We could, but we can repurpose the one that's already called product page. Okay. That one has everything. We, just, we can just rename it. So here's how we'll do this. We can select to display on the menu pages. Notice there's a section here, pages, or links. This is how we were able to put an external link over to Facebook, and categories. However, these are the categories of your blog posts. 
not the categories of your products. So here's our trick. We're going to create a link. And our link on the URL here is just going to be the pound sign, which is shift 3, the number sign. Hash mark. So we're going to delete the HTTP part and put the pound sign. And then the link text. This is the text that will display on the menu. We'll call it shop. What's the purpose of the pound sign? By default, it wants you to put in a valid address, like, you know, facebook.com or whatever. But then if someone were to click on that, it would go to facebook.com. We don't want it to go anywhere, but we still want it to be a menu item. So the hash mark here will make it act like a link, but it won't go anywhere. So we'll select Add to Menu. And we have to decide, okay, we'll have Home, then History, then Blog Contact, Shop. Sure, we'll leave Shop as the very rightmost item. If we wanted it anywhere else, we can, of course, click and drag to move it around. Don't indent it, because then it'll be a sub-menu item. But I'm going to leave it there at the end. The shop. You click the Add menu. Okay. So you're making teachers out of this. Yes. That helps in the previous version. So you click two times in Add menu. No. You didn't... I thought you had something already written and I assumed that you just needed to click menu item. But you didn't have anything, so you need to write it first and then add menu item. So we've got the shop added to the menu there, and now we need to add the, the drop-down items, all of those categories. So we will go back to the pages up here. The pages a uh, little section right there. And we need to then select, yes, add the PDFs, add the cakes, add the pies, add the cookies, add to menu. No. Just a moment. So make sure you check on all of these items. And then you want to select add to menu. And it'll add it to the menu. And then we'll have to rearrange it. Question. All right, so now we have to put it under shop. That's what I was about to say. Oh. I was going to ask you how it knew to go to the newest page. It didn't. It just put them all down there. So once you select them all and add to menu, they all go at the end of the menu. Now, they're not part of the shop menu item. They're just in the menu. To be a drop-down menu, they have to be indented. Notice we have Visit Facebook, which is indented on Contact. And the behavior of that was that when we were on the home page here and you roll over contact, drop down menu. So what we want to do is simply to drag each of these items and indent them. So let's say right here, PDF. I'm going to click and drag a little to the right and notice it indents. And then cake, drag it to the right. Be careful here because now this wants to indent as part of PDF recipe. So it would be a submenu of a submenu. We don't want that. Just fiddle around with it so that it in, in, it indents to the same level as the PDF recipe. Put that one right there, and then put that one right there. And then maybe you rearrange this. Maybe my cakes are the number one seller, so actually I want it above. And then pies, and then cookies, and then PDFs. You notice they then say sub-item. These are drop-downs of the top one, shop. So you want to save. Save menu on the 
top right, and then you can visit site. And now, up on our menu, that's the stuff we already had, you hover over Shop. There's all of those. Click on Cakes. It only shows cakes. Hover Cookies. Only Cookies. PDFs, etc. And then uh, if you hover over shop and you click on it, nothing happens. But we needed it to exist in order for this drop-down to work. And that's when we went here to uh, add the link, and that's why we put the pound sign, so that it acts like a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. Because if we did put some sort of address and you clicked on shop, it would go. Yes. Um, okay. Well, we're coming to a break soon, so I can I can look at that. But at this point, we've refined our menu a bit, and now we don't have this unwieldy products page, which just goes on and on, we've got it divided into sections, which makes more sense. Yes? In the menus, where it says products page, and then it says your account transaction results and check. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of that products page? That's the one that's built in, and that's the one that displays all your products. Okay. So it you're just not using that. You're that's right. You just leave it there, but it's not uh, activated. It's not activated exactly. You can add the add more details. when you delete it, when you more Say that again. That that link more details. Uh, that one was when we were editing the product and there was a section all the way at the bottom that said more detail. So notice this one has more detail, but some of them don't because we didn't add the more detail. On the product itself. Okay. On pecan pie, I did not add the more detail, so there's no detail. But on that birthday cake, I did add it, and now we get more detail. All right, so if we got this working at this point, very good. Let's uh, take a break, and if you need any questions answered, I'll help you out. It's 1021, so we'll be back at 1031, and we will do many more things.